America in Another World. Chapter 18, The Eagle Has Landed. Written by Ron the Black Cat. 0515 January 11, 2020 CE. 0637, Mid-Hour, Start 11th, 196 AE. Midway to Andrea. Mercator, Furious, and 30 other soldiers continue along a road that leads to Andrea. Mercator and Furious had met the other 30 soldiers along the way. These soldiers had also run like them when they had seen the giant bombers. Not far down the road, they see a soldier poking his head out of the forest that was adjacent to the road. The soldier shouts to them. Hey! Mercator, who is at the front of the group, replies. Hi, there. Are you soldiers from the front? Yes. I'm Sergeant Mercator Cordus of the 106th Infantry Regiment. Where are you from? I'm Private Kaiso Protus. With the 10th Tank Battalion. Kaiso looks up towards the sky before continuing to speak again. Quickly get off the road. They get off the road and continue into the forest. 10th Tank Battalion? We were supposed to arrive at the front yesterday, but we got bombed. We had to divert into the forest to continue. Tanks aren't good in forests, but it was still manageable since the trees weren't dense. What are you guys doing here from the front? The front's gone. The naval fortifications, trench, and artillery have been bombed to oblivion. We're retreating to Andrea to try to establish communications with the headquarters. A look of surprise is seen on Kaiso's face. Is this all the survivors from your sector? I only see about a platoon. Mercator shrugs as they come up to the tanks. There should be some more. I don't expect much. Most didn't get out in time. Carseo sighs. Then there's no more reason to continue towards the front anymore. Yeah. By the way, I thought you said this was the 10th tank battalion. If I remember correctly, a tank battalion should consist of about 36 tanks. Kaiso smiles bitterly. Quite knowledgeable of you. We originally had three companies of tanks. We are the only ones left. 36 tanks turned into 12 in mere minutes. We heard a roar and saw the enemy planes fly overhead. Before we knew it, the two companies of our battalion in front of us exploded. Are you still going to continue towards the front? I have to report what you just told me to the commander. I will go find him now. Kaiso quickly runs off and leaves them to follow the Industro IIS. A few minutes later, the tanks stop. Kaiso comes back with a man in an officer uniform. Which one of you is the leader of this platoon? Mercator salutes. I'm just a sergeant, sir. We are just disorganized retreaters. Just trying to establish contact with a superior officer. Since you are an officer, we will follow you. The officer looked at the retreaters before sighing and turning towards Mercator. I want you to lead them. We're turning back to Andrea. Kaiso, continue looking for anyone on the main road and don't forget to follow the tank noises. Yes, sir. 0620 January 11th, 2020 CE. 0710, mid hour, start 11th, 196 AE. FOB Dagger, near Agenport. In the command center, there are computers everywhere as men work round the clock. Sir, we have located the source of the enemy biplanes. They seem to be taking off from these two airfields. In his hands is a folder containing a satellite map with red circles drawn on where he is pointing. HM. They are very well camouflaged. That looks very like a part of a forest. We will need to strike those. Keep an eye out for more. A few minutes later. A hundred or so miles off the Mac Imperium. Thirty Tomahawk cruise missiles launch from Arleigh Burke destroyers and Ticonderoga cruisers. Fifteen heading in one direction and the other fifteen in a different direction. Less than an hour later. Airmen have gathered around in a massive building to listen to their base commander speak. Listen up men. These are trying times for our great Imperium. Our pathetic navy has failed us and the Imperium. It's time for the Air Corps to rise. We will not be an embarrassment like the navy. The Emperor has ordered all of you to be the saviors of our nation. 
Do not disappoint him. Once we receive reports that the enemy has landed, all air units on this base will swarm the enemy. All other airfields will do the same. The fighters must protect the bombers at all costs. The success of this mission depends on the bombers. Those who fall will be remembered as heroes. Do not fear death. Understood? Yes, sir. Suddenly, the building shook violently. The sound of explosions resonates throughout the base. A person runs into the building. Enemy attack. Get to the planes. Airmen run out of the building in a disorganized hurry. Seconds later, more explosions resonate through the air. Then a shout of panic arose. The runway has been destroyed. We can't take off. Find cover. Find cover. A massive explosion sends shockwaves across the airfield. Something had hit the building where bombs had been stored. Man the AA guns. Find enemy planes. Thirty minutes later. The base is burning brightly as fires rage. Black smoke billows to the sky. Sporadic explosions occur wherever the fires touch ammunition. 1202 January 11, 2020 CE. 1001, down hour, start 11, 196 AE. Anisium Castle. A person in military uniform knocks on the door. A haggard voice replies. Come in. What's the report? The voice came from a man who is looking at a map placed on a big table. Around the table, there are other men in uniform. The entering person saluted. Your Majesty, we are suffering massive losses in our infrastructure and military installations. We have just lost two of our hidden airbases. They were the ones operating the patrols. How is the front? We lost communications with it. The last news we know is that the trench is fine but the artillery and naval fortifications are gone. Send more tanks and artillery. Get them from the reserves. Anywhere that's not vital on the Magus front. Understood. After the person exits, a heavy silence set in. 1932 January 11, 2020 CE. 0146, new hour, start 12, 196 AE. A hundred miles off of the Mac Imperium. Nick and his tank crew board their Abrams. Around them, crews of other tanks are standing around. The tanks are on an LCAC in the belly of the USS Kearsarge, a WASP-class amphibious assault ship. Around the Kearsarge, multiple other amphibious assault ships accompanied it. The seas had been completely cleared from the combined efforts of submarines and strike fighters. We will just be securing the landing area and nearby towns. The three corps of the army will do the actual push to the enemy capital. Brian looks curiously at Nick. Won't there be any heavy resistance? Like the beach landings of World War II. The Air Force has been bombing them for six straight days. If they did their job right, don't expect much. If they didn't then we are in for a ride. 2000 January 11, 2020 CE. 0200, rise hour, start 12th, 196 AE. Nick and his crew felt their tank wobble as waves hit the LCAC. Seems like the Air Force did their job. Brian looked at Uma questionably. H.M.? What do you mean Connolly? No bombardments. I heard this country had World War I technology. They should have set up artillery or something to try to stop our landing. A few minutes later. After the LCAC deflated and opened, their Abrams touched the sand of the Mackeyan beach. Nick looks out of his tank. Wowie boys, the Air Force really did their job. A few miles in front of them, there are rubbles of what could be barely recognized as fortifications. Other tanks start forming up on the beach as more and more LCACs land. AAV-7S come up from the sea and start disgorging marines. Andrea. Mercata, when do you think they will finally come? I don't know. Haven't you asked that question multiple times already? Well, we're stuck in another trench now. At least it's in a town. Yeah, with no people around. With the arrival of what remained of the 10th Tank Battalion and survivors of the trench, the Mackeyan forces that are in town are 12 tanks and around 100 infantry. 
using the telegram, they have been able to establish contact with headquarters and learn that more reinforcements are coming. Of course, the reinforcements were ordered to go to the trenches, but that idea was scrapped when the survivors reported the destruction of the trench line. Headquarters then ordered them to evacuate all civilians inside the town. Most civilians had complained, but they had no actual ability to oppose it. Fifteen minutes later. Road to Andrea. Why are we advancing so slowly? Can't the lead tank pick this pace up? Connolly, this is a forested place. We have to be careful. Uma Connolly grumbles to that reply. Their platoon of 4M1A1 Abrams had been tasked with securing a town close to the beaches. For other platoons have been ordered to do the same for four other towns. These are all the towns within 15 miles of the beach. 2044 January 11, 2020 CE. 0222, mid hour, start 12th, 196 AE. Andrea. A soldier bursts out of the nearby forest shouting and running towards the officer. Captain. Captain. Enemies, enemies. They are moving slowly down the road. They will be here in minutes. Numbers? I could count many tanks about the size of our industrial ones. Get to your positions, men. We will hold out until our reinforcements arrive. Less than three miles away from Andrea. The forested road is quite peaceful. Nothing had disturbed them or tried to stop them. Then the platoon leader came over the headset. All tanks stop. I have a visual of the town. Multiple hostiles. Engaging. The lead tank lurched back a bit after it sent a round flying towards the enemy trench. Hostiles are cleared. We are moving forward. Andrea. Mercator is peeking out of the window of the house. We are so lucky to be repositioned here. Furious is crouched underneath the window. Mercator, what's the situation outside there? The enemy tanks just blew up the trench at the entrance with a single shot. A few minutes later. Multiple rounds ping off the sides of the four Abrams. Holy cow! Brian shouts in surprise as a couple of shots ping off their tank. Enemy tanks in the forest to the left and right. Alpha 3, Alpha 4, deal with the left. Alpha 2, with me. The lead tank and Nick's tank swing their turrets right to aim at the enemy tanks. Using their thermals, they can see the enemy heat signatures in the forest. I have sights on one. Loaded. Sending. The small enemy light tank explodes in a fiery ball as the M830A1 heat, high explosive anti tank, hits it. Back up, back up. Within mere seconds of the start of the tank battle, a third of their forces are already gone. The enemy has seemingly suffered no casualties. Their captain had come up with an ingenious plan to catch the enemy off guard. Instead of putting the tanks in the town to guard it, they can station the tanks inside the forest. This will allow them to launch a surprise ambush while the enemy comes up the road towards the town. Of course, this didn't account for the enemy being invulnerable to their guns. The tank crews in the surviving tanks start to panic. What kind of tank can ricochet multiple shots to its side? It is as if they were trying to shoot through a hundred millimeters of solid steel. To them this is ridiculous. Equipped with its classified Chobham armor, the armor all around the Abrams can be comparable to several hundred millimeters of steel.